This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. Five. Check for sound. Four. It's showtime. Three. Let's two, go. One. Thanks to Rode Microphones and Harlan Hogan's VoiceOverEssentials.com. The home of the Portable Pro. This is the Pro Audio Suite podcast with Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post Chicago. Darren Robbo Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging Sydney. From LA, George the Tech Whitten, the Tech to the VO Stars. And me, Andrew Peters, voiceover talent and home studio guy. Welcome to another Pro Audio Suite Quick Bite. Thanks to Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, the home of the Portabooth Pro, and Rode Microphones. Now, as we loom ever closer to the silly season, things tend to go a bit sideways, and we all need a bit of support. But if you can't get support, what's your backup? We'll actually have a whole backup studio, almost. Um, I run uh, a 002 rack uh, as my interface. Um, and about three or four years ago, when they sort of really dropped in price, I picked myself up a spare one, which now sits in the rack as a just in case. Uh, if my Mac goes down, my, my MacBook Pro is all installed with Pro Tools ready to go. Um, and I also have, if all else fails, I have a Zoom H6 and a Mbox Pro sitting in a box out in the garage. If you know interfaces have their wily ways. So, I mean, hopefully that would cover me. Now, I think I know what uh, Robert's backup is. It's a TRS cable <laughs> with a splitter <laughs> and his neighbour's Wi-Fi. Yeah. But uh, uh, do you... I would have said just for a challenge, he's probably just got a couple of RCA leads hanging out back <laughs> yeah. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I have too much stuff. I have, I mean... Depends on what you're talking about. I, I I have a system at my studio that I very often screen share into, and we'll just do things that way. Um, there's two rooms over there. There's my Pro Tools system up here, and I still run Pro Tools 10, like just old TDM, rock solid, gets the job done. So those systems are, you know, still sporting it. And then I've got my laptop. I've got the Sentrance. I've got a Zoom H6. I've got a Apollo Twin. Uh, it's the bulk of it. <laughs> it's <laughs> enough crap, though. But often it's more like just trying to travel light, and and a lot of those things are like not set up. That's why I like the TRRS cable because it's just so like quick, essentially. Yeah. yeah. Um, gets it done quick and easy. Mm. Um. But but right now I'm using this entrance because I'm on my uh, there's there's this laptop here it's a 2013 but it doesn't have TRRS ah uh. yeah not every Mac it does it I found out wow. I'm I'm pretty sure if I plug it in it's gonna not give the mic is what yeah. happens interesting yeah if the laptop has two jacks then one's an in and one's an out. Yeah, um, but this th- that's what, exactly, but this is a 2013 that only has one jack. Oh, but it's still just but a it's, headphone jack. It's not a headset jack. Yeah. All right. <laughs> right. Oh, that's interesting. Must check mine out. So what do you normally see, what, or what do you advise, George, for particularly voice talent as a backup? Yeah. Um, notice he didn't ask me what I have for backup because I have probably 15 audio interfaces <laughs> yes, we know. Right, in a box. I was going to say, yeah. yeah. Um, George is pretty well covered. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, recommend? <laughs> there's a lot of different backup things, right? So we're talking about like actual audio chain backups. And, and you know, I, the people that really do depend on their voiceover career uh, to survive, I, I certainly recommend that they have one of two of everything, essentially. So, it doesn't necessarily mean they have to have two 416s or 416s. Um, they could have a 416 and an NTG 5 or an NTG 4. Uh-huh. Um, but they also could just have a really good USB mic um, as well. And some people just have an Apogee mic, um, which is in the right hands when used correctly, can sound really damn good. So there are different ways of doing backup, and it depends on 
you know, how flexible people are to deal with adverse conditions. <laughs> like for some people, they just can't deal with anything being substandard. So for them, it literally, you just have to have a duplicate. Um, my, some of my top clients have a backup house. Yes. <laughs> really? Well, yep. Well, Almost we literally, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes, they have a you know they have a weekend house. Yeah, right. Okay, and they yeah. can just run down to the weekend house, hmm. um, and they have another studio there, and they have everything is the same. So that's an extreme case, and for the well-to-do, it's the ultimate. Backup. La di da, yeah, totally. La di da, um, but yeah, just you know, a secondary microphone, a stunt mic, as you might call it, and you know, it's not, a road mic is an awesome stunt mic <laughs> yeah. for some. Um, and, uh, an audio interface, the MicPort Pro 2 is just in, in terms of having a secondary unit that is a no compromise sound quality device that you can use with anything is, uh, and the, mic, the mixer face as, as Robert mentioned, it's, it's brother also an excellent unit because they're just, there's no, there's no sonic compromise in using one of these, no matter how small it, it may be. So that's an awesome backup to have with you um, wherever you go. Um, and then there's also like the issue of data backup. There's the issue of um, connectivity backup. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple different kinds of backups I was thinking of when you mentioned this. I was thinking data backup when the subject was first proposed or when, when you said backup. I was right. thinking like backup. That's what backup yeah. is. But I, I think of the setup differently, actually. I... It's like, or if if I was a voice talent, I would, I would think in sets of just I need a travel rig and I need a studio rig. Yep. And if one fails, then you got the other. I, I don't know that you need like a clone of, you know. True. Um, I mean, at least I would start there, unless you are like, oh, I'll just get a backup house. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, yeah, that's what I mean. It's different for everybody. Some people are so locked into their habits and their workflows. That if anything was to change, they get upset. I won't name anybody. I've had those clients. I still do. But those that are used to working on the road, too, because they do promo, have a promo of portable rig that is pro quality. So they just, by nature, have a backup. I've, I've seen know? people do this. Um, they have a Manly Vox box at home. And they have a UA travel rig with the Manly Vox Box plugin or whatever hardware, and they clone mm -hmm. it up, and they dial it in, and it, I guess sounds exactly the same. It's close enough, right? Exactly, and they can and they can keep it consistent for those clients, especially like the promo type clients that need to be ready whenever and be consistent. Um, so. You know, we you know, I just interviewed Bo Weaver on VOBS. Uh -huh. And what I yeah. love about Bo is he's gone he's gone like Benjamin Button. You know, he's gone from the incredibly overkill home studio to the completely simple studio. Over time, he's he's he hasn't gotten a bigger and better and everything. He's gone simpler and simpler. And now he literally uses a 416 and a Scarlet. That's yeah, wow. it. at really? home and on the road. Huh. That is all he uses. He's like, I like the consistency. I like the simplicity. That's so funny because because last time we talked, he was like, let's process the world on input. Yeah. Was, wasn't it? Nope. Ab not anymore. Not anymore. He's changed his tune. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Robbo, like, like high five. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Massive high five. We've had an yeah. effect. No, I mean, and so it's like, it's for everybody, it's a different thing. And, and. You know, I had I a client surprised. who had literally in the closet a duplicate of everything in the studio. Like he, and so theory being that he can unplug his Mackie 1642 analog console, you know, and plug everything into the new one, you mm. know? Mm. And, uh, and he even had 20 marine deep cell battery, to read, what do they call them? Deep, deep, uh, whatever the hell those Or big, deep charge or whatever they, yeah, I know what you're saying. Deep cycle batteries, you know, that yeah. can handle. He had those in the basement and, an, and, a, and a UPS that would kick in if he lost power. And he's like, I'm so glad I had it because I used it for a week one year. <laughs> you know, there's so many levels of backup for power. Yeah, I mean, data power backup, that, that comes out of nowhere for me. I was, I didn't, I don't even think I would have thought of power backup. Yeah. But yeah. internet backup, I mean, I... I, I definitely tether with my cell phone all the time, and it's great just for troubleshooting. 
You know, mm. if, if, if you just have to figure out if like something's dropping out, is it me or you, you got to change something. Let's switch to a tether. Yeah. You, mm. Um, yeah, that's and, a no-brainer. Everybody has a hot See, spot. I got a modem that goes, I, well, here in Australia, I use Telstra uh, for my internet connection. And I bought a modem off them that if the cable connection drops out, it goes to Wi Fi. 4G? Yeah, it goes to 4G. Sorry, I should say. Yes. Yeah. It goes to 4G. Uh-huh. So that's. Oh, you mean your provider has this? Yeah. That's I haven't right. heard of anybody stateside with that. Yeah, it's like I, that's I have a really router handy. that does that. Yeah, it's really handy. I have a router that does that, but I've never heard of a provider providing that. That's freaking brilliant. Oh, when when we do tech support for people in Australia, all of the routers have that. Mm. Most of them, most of them do. Yeah. Oh my yeah. God, we are so behind the curve here. No, Jesus. no, you're not. No, no you're not. <laughs> we have well, to don't ever say that. that. <laughs> don't ever we have believe to that. A hundred hamsters to keep the power. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jesus. Well, I guess yeah. it's just different priorities because Australia is so spread out with so much. Like, don't yeah. you guys have a tremendous amount of rural? Yeah, yeah. We. Uh, oh population? yeah, absolutely. If you can imagine the size of North America and the population of New York. Yeah. That's right. Uh, right. That, that will give you yeah, a pretty good so idea. So for of them, that. they have an infrastructure problem. That it's like Wyoming everywhere. <laughs> yes, right. That's right. Pretty <laughs> yeah. much. So yeah. yeah, but I mean, that's I just literally today talked to a client about getting a router which has a double WAN function. So yep. WAN is wide open or wide area network. Mm-hmm. And I have a I have a router now called a Synology that has this feature. So it will turn one of the LAN ports into a WAN port. And then you can have a cable modem and a Fios fiber modem or whatever, but you still have to really hack it all together. So I've got the Synology, and, and, and then you can get an LTE modem, and then you know you get an LTE contract with somebody, and then yes, you can hack it all together if you're persistent enough. It's it's a yeah lot of yeah work. yeah. You have to be careful. Like the the corporate routers have dual WAN. That's a feature that's been in corporate routers for yes. a long time. It's called fallback protection or load right. balancing. Load balance. And the load balance is the one that you have to be really careful of because some of those can interfere with the ability for something that's streaming out to like, like you're like switching locations as far as like if you switch from one internet to the other. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't know if I would necessarily expect this to be completely like, seamless to the user like it, you they may still be a hiccup right you don't you don't want to set them to like switch too quickly or right um there's there's certain situations where i mean of course with anything there's like oh look at all these settings like the wrong yeah. combination of those settings will cause will create dropouts because it could start switching between the yeah, services too it's quickly not quite or, like a ups for a battery backup for a computer where it's literally instantaneous but it still means that, like, okay, let's take a beat, let me reconnect, and we're back online, as opposed to, well, yes. I'm offline. <laughs> yeah. It's a storm out there. My tree, I got lost my internet again. You know, I mean, what's <laughs> what's really funny is today I had a session, and the and literally we got everyone online. We had all the clients on 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 Source Live on the gateway. Uh, we had a couple clients who were phone patched in. I had been connected to the talent for at least. 15 minutes beforehand or longer, we were chatting. A few clients jump on and we're talking. The last client jumps on and then we go back and like the the voice talent's gone. <laughs> <laughs> and and my source connected the thing where it's like connected, but there's nothing receiving. And and then I disconnected from it and it still showed. It was like basically like he vanished and our server wasn't even too sure what happened. And a Few minutes, I, our our producer calls him up. Like you know, three minutes later, he's like, "Yeah, I had to, I had to go reboot my modem." <laughs> is what he was doing. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Whatever happened, he had stopped his his whole internet. Like he he couldn't get anything on the internet, and he had to go power down and power up his modem. And there he was, like five minutes later. And <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's always a nightmare that you're about to do a session, a live session. It was like Murphy's Law, because yeah. we were yeah. connected for like 15 minutes at least beforehand. Everything's yeah. fine. And then like... Yeah. What's so tough on people is like, you know, it's not just a talent and an engineer in a vacuum. It's a talent and engineer and then clients. No, we had, we had probably eight people and, on the line. Yeah. And so total. everybody's yeah. sitting there twiddling their thumbs. It know? wasn't that bad. I mean, honestly, he, it was... Yeah. But it's horrible for the talent in that window of time. Oh, panic! Like if you're, if, if, yeah. if, unless you're a seasoned vet and you like, okay, hang on, this is routine, whatever. But for most, it's total panic. It's just like, oh my god, am I coming back online? 
it's like going, you know, the dark side of the moon, you know, you're just like, yeah. I mean, it's not even that my daughter the other day is taking a math test and at the very, like, she's got to turn it at a certain moment of time and blink. And, and I'm just like downstairs and I hear this like, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Reboot the modem. <laughs> oh, yeah. it so like, painful. Yeah. Yep. Well, we'll all be on Starlink in a few years. You know what Starlink is? You know no. What? Starlink is um, Elon Musk's blanketing the the globe in 10,000 low Earth orbit satellite internet connection. Right. That's what and you can do when you own a rocket ship company. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so far, so far he has 895 of them up there. So he's Holy got a pretty cow. good start. Wow. And it's being used by some of the fringes of the world where there literally is no internet. And some of them are getting 170 meg down and about 25 up. What is the latency? Like, well, that is a good question. Because and the I, time to the bird, as they say. The time to the bird. Yes, that is a good question. I haven't read much about it. I'm actually scro- literally scrolling through uh, Wikipedia right now to see if I can see a stat on that. And I haven't seen one yet. Can you imagine? Can you imagine flying one of those rockets into space? Though it's going to be like flying a rocket through a parking lot. There's so much, so many. At some point, at some point, you're gonna we're gonna have that problem. Yeah, yeah, I heard a story once about how they don't actually know how to predict where everything in space is at any one time. Oh, they literally that. haven't figured that out. Well, how yeah. much junk's floating <laughs> around out there? Is there yeah, is exactly. Right. Let alone there is stuff more they stuff do know. floating than they know yeah, where how to track it. That's like right. they've lost track of everything. Yes, yeah, it's kind of so scary. When's the next Challenger disaster then? Yeah. Well, will he put how many satellites up there? Uh, almost nine hundred so far. Nine hundred. How does that not blanket that, the at, Earth at as the it best, is? That thing's going to be good for fifteen years. What do you think? Yeah. yeah Before they're like, of, we need to replace this. Thing. Yeah, it runs out yeah, of batteries. Yeah. And, yeah. What what they need to do is they need to start putting satellites that are just racks. Okay, here we go. You and you just wanna, put a nineteen and you just go. <laughs> you want to know? You want to know some stats? Here we go. Internet traffic via geostationary satellite has a minimum theoretical round trip latency of at least four hundred and seventy-seven milliseconds between Ooh. user and ground gateway. But in practice, current satellites are latencies of three hundred. I'm sorry, six hundred milliseconds or more. Uh-huh. However, Starlink satellites are orbiting at one one hundred and fifth to one thirtieth of the height of geostationary orbits. Oh. And thus, they offer more practical earth to sat latencies of around 25 to 35 milliseconds. Bl- no comparable shit. Comparable to existing cable and fiber. Wow. That's great. That is, that is good. Insane? So it's yeah. low it's level. That's how they get around it. Because before, yeah, the low like, earth orbit. latency was always a problem with satellite. Right. So the satellites that you use for TV and, and stuff are stationary. You point your dish at the thing, it's in space, and it just looks at it. These things are like a mesh, constantly in motion, right? And your antenna is just talking to an array of them at all times, just like your GPS yeah. on your phone's talking to like 15 to 20 of these things. It's quiet. That's what this thing's doing. It's talking to a mesh, and it's just figuring out, well, that one's got a good signal it's right your now. Google, it's your Google Wi-Fi home mesh in the sky. In space. It's Skynet. It's, it's insane. That's exactly and, and what it is. The antenna is warm, <laughs> so it melts snow. So even if it's snowing on the thing, it still works. So... It's it's uh, pretty cool. I digress. I know that's way down the rabbit hole, but, <laughs> but, no, that is, but we awesome. have, and, we and have how, technology. <laughs> can, can, I, can I just throw this out there? And this is completely unrelated, but isn't it scary that one man could potentially control the Earth's internet communications? communications? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, well, maybe doesn't that bother anybody? One from, well, what if the competition to that one man is the guy that runs Facebook? <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 No Does that make it better or worse? I don't know. I think that makes oh, it God. worse. That's good. I don't know. Yeah. Well, so, it's likely. As long as there's so, no orange um, men in the equation. Yeah. And then the other guy is going to be the guy that runs Amazon. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, laugh. How but come I, that's highly likely. Yeah, of course. It's, yeah. Oh, it's scary. It's, yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. What are other backups? So data backup. You need to have, uh, you know, time machine. You want to have a cloud backup. I like Backblaze. Backblaze, right? That's, That's a cloud awesome. backup solution. Yeah. 
Is that cloud only, or does that also have a local component? No, I thought that was well, your sexual Well, it, it relies on a local component. So what Backblaze <laughs> does is it says, if um, if you have a hard drive and you don't want to ever lose anything on that hard drive, it's it's off-site storage. And so as long as that as long as it can see that hard drive once every thirty days or something, it'll keep a complete copy of that hard drive. Wow. If that hard drive blows up. You can actually ask them to send you a drive with all the data on it, so you don't have to go through the pain of downloading terabytes. That's huh. a good service. That's a good yeah. service. Or you can yeah. download it at, at no charge. Um, and then if you have a drive that you no longer use and it goes away, at some point, um, you know, they ask you, like, this data is going to go away. Do you want to download a backup of it, or shall we delete it too? So it's not like long-term storage of all your stuff. It has to mirror a drive that is physically in your possession. But it's it's a um, immutable storage. In other words, if you destroy your drive or erase your drive, you got it. That's still, still there in the cloud, right? Yeah. yeah, and it has many Dropbox like features too. So I can access files on my cell phone okay. from from that parallel. You know, I'll look into copy it. of my drive. It's and it's amazingly affordable. It's like fifty bucks a year. Wow! Wow! wow. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's sure. good. I yeah. Well, we're on backups. Robert, here's a question for you. How Pro Tool sessions for clients, how long do you hang on to them? Do you like I, I obviously oh, at forever. the end of each year I pull out a, a the sure. hard drive and stick in a new one for each year. Archive. Do you have a drawers so, and so cupboards way, full of hard drives? Yeah, the way the way we work at someone is we have a RAID six drive array. So it's like spinning a bunch of SATA drives. Um yeah. and that whole thing amounts to a couple terabytes of storage mm -hmm. um and what, what happens with all those drives spinning at the same time is if any one or two of them i think fail all you have to do is slide in a new one and it heals itself and it doesn't lose any data because it sprays a certain amount of redundancy across all the drives yeah. so it can lose a certain number of them without losing data and it self heals at some point that system gets full and then um we make a backup of it that's sort of um it's kept online and and that's all backed up with um backblaze and then uh when it's whatever like a client that like like usually if if your client loses their client then you can archive that stuff that situation or whatever this stuff gets old enough and then the way we do it is we each make a we dump it all into two hard drives and each person takes one hard drive home. Okay. Right. Oh yeah. That's a good idea. I, I was using, I still use it, but not nearly like I used to because now, now literally my entire business exists in a Google drive. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's all already co-located co essentially. Yep. And it's on time machine. Um, but I uh, I used to use a thing called Crash Plan, and one of its unique features, which maybe Backblaze does now too, is if they had a free plan, and instead of cloud backup, it was buddy backup. So at your buddy's house, you'd have a hard drive, and then so all your backups would be going to your own hard drive, but over at your buddy's house. And you could do it between buddies, you know, you could have as many as you wanted, but you're just co-locating to another guy's house. Um and obviously you want your, you know, you guys want to both have a decent internet connection, but, um, you know, when it's doing incremental backups online, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't take that long. And so it's free and it's just doing it through the, through the internet, but to your own physical drive in a friend's place. Yeah. I thought that was a pretty cool solution. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. It's, wow. it's funny. Cause I don't think I have one, like, as far as like, besides audio files and clients for, or files that are run for like a business. Think about all the personal accounts that you have, and the like. <laughs> you have like photos on Google. Yeah, yep. I'm sure everyone has like a huge spread of every like a Dropbox account, a Google Drive account. I have three Google Blaze Drive accounts. accounts. Yeah, mm -hmm. three yeah, stuff all over the place. Yeah, that's it's right. really hard to keep track. It man. is my, absolutely. My, uh, ex, my ex wife is a photographer, and she had this book called The Damn Book, which stood for <laughs> Digital Asset Management. And wow. it was like an inch thick. Oh, clever. And it was just. How to keep track of your shit. That's yeah. basically what this book is. Because as a photographer or and as a photographer's assistant on a set, like that's literally your job. At the end of yeah. that day, you have to be accounting accountable for every file. I, I kind of combine two uh, little processes. I use a thing called Carbon Copy Cloner, 
Oh, yeah. Um, oh, which yeah. basically Good clones my hard that. drive, which I, and then I have another hard drive on an old PC that sits in the corner that backs all that, all my work up to there. And then from there it goes to Dropbox and up to the cloud. So That's sort nice. of I'm a long way around that, but it, I kind of figure at least I have a local copy if I need it. But, yeah. Well, the common I, copy is smart because you can have immediate... Yeah. You can yeah. just boot immediately and be back to work. That's right. I used to have the mother of crash plan accounts because I would back up. Not only could you back up multiple drives, you could back up multiple computers. Oh, right. wow. And I had, I had that wired. I had my assistant using it, my ex-wife and everybody. And they got wise eventually like, oh, no, we're going to start billing you per computer. And all of a sudden my uh, bill yeah, went from 12 bucks a month to like 75 a month. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I had to start telling, uh, you need to get your own account. Um, yeah. And that happened. So Yeah, yeah wow. But uh, no, I like the Backblaze idea. That's pretty yeah, good. That's yeah, that's great. That's very cool. <laughs> It's funny because you were talking about the buddy thing, and I was like, not a bad idea. (laughs) (laughs) Should that happen? Yeah. Yeah. Your your own best friend. Yeah, I've already done that. (laughs) (laughs) So we covered the round of backups, right? I think we have. um, Equipment, uh, recording studio equipment backup, Mm -hmm. data connectivity backup, Mm -hmm. power Power. backup we touched on. Absolutely. And and finally, media backup. Yeah. And then the only other management. the only other backup we need is a voice box backup for the voiceover pros when they have a cough or a cold or a sore throat, and we'd be covered. I got exactly. a backup that that um, I, I, I have a I have a client who uses VISDN and keeps an ISDN bridge uh, SPID as well, hmm. so that when traveling or if for any reason he's got he's got a bridge or direct wow. ISDN. That's good on your basis. That is absolutely. But if you were going to, uh, why wouldn't you just have Source Connect and then if you had to do a session on ISDN, you just buy a bridge for the day or something? Because they're like, you know, bridging has a, essentially, uh, the, the, the way I explain it is that bridging combines not the best, but the worst qualities of every system that it bridges between. Uh, and it's just like, it's, it increases latency, increases the mechanics and the places where things can go wrong. Um, it inherits, uh, if you're doing it over Chrome, um, it inherits all the uh, inherits all the um, like just VoIPy, Skypey stuff that Chrome can do. Um, and Source Connect, it keeps it consistent at least in time, but you still have extra latency no matter what. So yeah, people would if if they're doing ISDN sessions every day, it, it's better to have a direct connection through VISDN or through the phone company than to bridge, I guess. Yeah. Cool. Well, my backup to the calendar on my uh, Mac is a file of facts. <laughs> yeah. And if it gets run over, it's fine. And uh, yeah, that is one thing I don't have a real backup for is my is literally my calendar. I mean, I guess I do because I can go on my iPhone, but the iPhone's really just connecting to the I Google just use, calendar. I just use so. Google Calendar. So what, what, what no, do you I need know, a backup? Do you need a backup for Google Calendar? No. Google's reliable, right? You just trust Google, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. just trust Google. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. pray to my benevolent <laughs> Google overlords every morning. Well, well, look what Google did recently. I don't know who who uses Google Photos. I do. No, not me. No, not me. You you do, George. I'm fully into the Google. <laughs> The so Googles. so so they're now charging for a standard definition. Like after a certain point, now oh, every photo, what? like there's charging for the space. It just goes against your entire Google account, essentially. Which yeah, yeah, so yeah. far I've been able to keep my email trim and still live within 15 gigs. But not um, me, dude. Well, I I now have a Google Workspace account, which was Google Suites before that, and um, you know I'm paying 12 bucks a month for that, and. And it's it's essentially un, unlimited for for no it's not even unlimited I think it's two terabytes a month or two terabytes of online storage and I, and I will use probably a third to a half of that most of the time, but that's not my photos I guess the photos could go in there if I set it up to do that but um, yeah no I'm just using the free Google Photos which means it keeps a low quality or a slightly it's reduced standard quality right they're charging for that now that's what I'm saying. Uh, Sons of bitches. There you oh, go. Okay. <laughs> like ben, it turns on Better dig out the 35 mil SLR. Yeah, yeah, that's you right. You know how many photos I have in Google Photos? I think I have like 35,000 in there. I mean, I mean, what I'm picturing is this, and I, I don't think it's going to be possible, but my dad has like 
a boatload of slides and I was going to have him <laughs> like scan these things. And I was like, you yeah. should do it. You should do it. Um, and it's like, get that stuff uploaded before whatever date it is, because then at a certain right. date, every new file, they're still going to give you the old storage for free. They're not oh, charging okay. for what's there. Yeah. Gotcha. But you're like, grandfathered in. Mm -hmm. So start, gotcha. start getting your grandfather to uh, upload all the slides. Mm. Yeah. I, I've got all the slides here, actually, my dad's slides. Yeah. I mean, have you scanned them? No. You know the old saying with anything, if you don't have two copies, you don't have one. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And in the digital is, world, you, if you don't have three. You know, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hey, there's your backup. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We just did we a full circle. <laughs> over and out. <laughs> This show was mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging. Edit by Andrew Peters. Using Rode microphones and Source Connect Now. Tech support from George the Tech Whittem. And supported by Harlan Hogan's VoiceOverEssentials.com. The home of the Portabooth Pro. Yeah.